Are you interested in collecting rainwater and want a simple do-it-yourself method? This video will describe how to retrofit a 50-gallon drum into a rain barrel for roof runoff. The Snohomish Conservation District has been offering workshops with interest from rural and urban homeowners alike on why rainwater harvesting is important and how to do it. Rainwater catchment is a valuable way to reduce the impact that stormwater runoff has on your own property as well as on our local waterways. Many of us have drainage issues at home from wet basements to flooded lawns. A rain barrel helps to slow roof runoff and direct the overflow to parts of the landscape that can absorb it. This also reduces the amount of stormwater runoff that is negatively affecting our local water bodies. A rain barrel can also provide a source of inexpensive, high quality water, perfect for watering the garden during our dry summers, and a home improvement project that will really make a difference. These are the tools and parts you will need for this project. They will be explained later in the video and you can also print them out from our website. This is the rain barrel site before any construction has been done. Uh, this is approximately where we're going to be placing the barrel. We have a downspout here. We're going to bring the downspout along this wall and drop it straight down into the barrel. This is a 55 gallon food grade barrel. Um, a little bit of uh, anatomy of the barrel. There are two bungs here on the top of the barrel. They each have caps on them and then a rim um, all the way around it. Uh, these bungs are all recessed a little bit, which will be important uh, later on the construction. Um, it should be noted that this barrel needs to be used specifically for this installation. There are many other different types of barrels, but if you're going to use our setup, you need to use this type of barrel. We're also going to be putting an overflow hole right here in the side of the barrel and then an outlet hole here in the bottom that we will connect our hose to for irrigation. Here we have a hardened platform that we've made to put the rain barrel on top of. Uh, this serves a couple of purposes. It raises the elevation of the barrel so it's easier to access the spigot that we're going to put on the bottom of the rain barrel. It also uh, raises the elevation so that we have um, a little bit more pressure going through the hose. Uh, the higher you raise the barrel, the more pressure that you'll have for watering uh, the surrounding garden. Um, it serves as a uh, hard platform to keep the barrel from sinking on one side or the other. And uh, it uh, also is important that it's as level as possible so that you don't get more weight um, from the water in one side of the barrel, causing it to tip over. You can make these out of uh, any kinds of material, uh, bricks like we have here, or flagstones, or cinder blocks, or you know the, the round of a tree, just as long as it uh, raises the elevation, is level, and is hard. All right, now we're going to drill out the holes uh, for our barrel. We're going to drill three holes. Uh, we're going to drill out one of the bungs on the top. We're going to drill a hole on the side for an overflow, and we're going to drill a hole in the bottom for uh, the outlet. Uh, I generally like to use a corded drill when I'm doing this. Battery drills do work okay, but they don't have as consistent torque or power. Um, and this bit that I have in here is a four inch hole saw. It has a pilot uh, bit at the end uh, that'll go in first to keep the blade from wobbling all over the place. And then this is the hole saw. Um, you need to be very careful with this, this hole saw. It's very sharp. Uh, it tends to buck when you start drilling. Uh, so, so you need somebody strong and, and and preferably experienced with these type of hole saws uh, when you're drilling out your bung. And then I'm going to switch over to a 7 8 inch spade bit to do the holds in the side and in the bottom. When we're drilling out the bung, we're going to make sure that our pilot bit right here goes right in the center of this cap. And then you just drill it down a little bit to secure it. Uh, make sure that that pilot bit's not going to come out. Uh, and then uh, Brace yourself for, for drilling the actual four inch hole. Okay, here is the bung that's been drilled out. Uh, this is going to be the inlet hole for our rain barrel. So the downspout is going to come down and discharge directly to this hole um, and, and then the water will go into the barrel. You'll notice that uh, this hole is located in a little depression in the top of the barrel. Uh, this is a good thing. It means that the water uh, will pool in this depression and then drip into the rain barrel instead of ponding around the, the surface of the, of the barrel. All the water um, should go straight into your rain barrel so you shouldn't have too much pooling on top of it. This is a six inch piece of gutter screen. Uh, it's just wire rigid gutter screen that you can buy at most hardware stores. 
We're going to place this over the hole and we're going to screw it down using six screws and washers. This is going to act as a filter for larger debris, so leaves, needles that come out of your doubt spout will be collected here instead of going into your barrel where they can clog everything up. To screw down the gutter screen, we're going to use a number six half inch sheet metal screw and a one eighth by three quarter inch fender washer. The screw is going to go straight through the washer and then we're going to screw it down through the mesh of the gutter screen. We're now going to switch to a 7 8 inch spade bit and we're going to drill the holes for the overflow and for the outlet. Uh, we were going to drill the overflow hole a uh, 90 degree angle from our inlet uh, so that the overflow can go, uh, can go that way along the wall. And you want to drill this hole uh, as perpendicular to the barrel wall as you can and you want to leave about 3 inches from the top of the barrel to where your hole will be drilled. Uh, it's going to be important that you keep the barrel stable as you're drilling so you either need another person here helping you hold the barrel or straddle the barrel. Uh, so it doesn't move very much and you have some good control as you're drilling. There's your hole. We're now going to drill the outlet hole that your hose will hook up to uh, that you'll be able to irrigate from. Now this is really important. Where you drilled your inlet, you want your outlet hole to be on the opposite side of the barrel from that. Uh, because otherwise you'll have your downspout here and your wall here. And if you drill it on this side, uh, your spigot will be going right into the wall. You won't be able to use it very well. So it needs to be on the opposite side of where your downspout is going to come in. We're going to drill this hole about two inches above the bottom of the barrel. That will leave some sediment storage in the bottom um, so that you won't be pumping lots of sediment out of your barrel. Um, you will need to clean your barrel about once a year of that sediment that builds up. We're going to put that hole right about there. Now that we've cut both of our holes, our outlet hole and our overflow hole, we're going to use a 3 quarter inch 14 NPT uh, pipe tap to cut uh, threads into these holes in the plastic of the barrel. And then we're going to take our PVC pieces and screw them directly into the barrel. This is a 3 quarter inch 14 NPT pipe tap. We're going to use this to cut threads into the holes that we made in the barrel. Uh, you can see uh, there's these little teeth on it and then you stick it in the hole and as you turn it, it cuts threads into the plastic of the barrel that we can screw the PVC pieces directly into. You need a crescent wrench in order to do this and basically you're just going to, to put this right into the hole like this and then screw all the way down until, um, until your threads have been cut into the barrel. As you tap this, it's really important that the tap goes in as straight as possible. So it needs to be perpendicular to the barrel and then be uh, screwed straight into the barrel. Uh, usually the best thing to do is to just kind of get it started with your hand um, and then look at it occasionally to make sure that you're going in straight. And then when you have a good bite from the teeth, uh, move to your crescent wrench and use a crescent wrench to screw it all the way into the barrel. You want to make sure that you, s you go all the way to the end of the threads because that will make your cuts nice and clean. Um, if you only go halfway, usually it's really hard to get your fittings to fit into the, the barrel. So I'm going to keep screwing until I'm nearly all the way down. Just don't screw too much far because then you'll end up with your pipe tap uh, in in your barrel. So that's probably good right there and then you just loosen it and you can screw, unscrew the rest of it with your hand and then if you look in you see nice clean pipe threads that you can uh, use your screw your PVC fittings right into. And there you have Nice clean threads cut into that 7 8 inch hole. 
This is the assembly for your overflow. You have a three quarter inch PVC uh, threaded male, threaded female elbow. The threaded end is going to go directly into the overflow hole in your barrel. And then on the female end, we are going to put a pipe to hose adapter fitting. This is a pipe to hose adapter. Uh, these are the pipe fittings. This will screw into your 90 degree elbow and then you'll put your hose here for your overflow. Um, the threads for a pipe are different than the threads for a hose, so you need to sh make sure that you have one of these, otherwise you won't be able to connect your hose to your barrel. So you're going to take your 90 degree elbow and your adapter and take the, the pipe fittings of the adapter and screw it into the female end. So it will look like that, and that's what your overflow assembly is going to look like. So then you take some silicone and just dab it a couple of drops on the threads of our 90 degree elbow. Like that. All right, then we're going to screw the male end of our elbow right into our overflow hole. Like this. You may also want to take a little bit of silicone and put it around the edges. And then you're going to attach your hose directly to this and put wherever you want your overflow to go. Um, uh, you're going to run the hose along the side and then out to your overflow location. This is going to be your hose outlet assembly. You have a 2 inch Schedule 80 PVC nipple, a ball valve, 3 quarter inch ball valve. This is the ball valve currently in the on position and you can see as I turn it, 90 degrees it will be off. And a pipe to hose adapter. The nipple is going to go directly into the bottom of the barrel and then the ball valve is going to tie to the nipple. Take a little bit of silicone again, dab it around the edge of your nipple, and then screw that into your rain barrel. Now that we have your barrel finished, we're just going to take it and put it up on your platform. Make sure you settle it so that it's level and that the, the overflow is going the direction you want and the hose outlet is going the place you want. We're going to put the downspout here, so we're just going to bring the downspout along the wall and then directly into the inlet right here. And here we have the final product. We have the barrel in place, we've brought the downspout over, and it's going right into our inlet of our barrel. The Snohomish Conservation District frequently holds Build Your Own Rain Barrel workshops. If you are considering a larger system, check out our other videos on connecting rain barrels and rainwater cisterns. For more information, visit betterground.org.